realized your online life isn't real. It's a, it's a collage. Hi everyone, my name is Josh Snow D Show, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to recreate this effect that's often used in the show You on Netflix. So the first thing we need to note for this tutorial is we have to have a method to record our screen. So most phones nowadays just have your standard recording feature where if you just swipe up, it'll allow you to record. However, this might be different if you're using Android or iPhone, but I'm sure most phones will have a feature that'll allow you to screen record. And if you're working on your computer or desktop, there's also usually mobile versions of all these social media sites like Instagram, where you can just record your desktop screen. So one idea if you're on a Mac is using QuickTime to record, which is free. I personally record using ScreenFlow for all of my screen recording tutorials. That's not free, but it's another idea for you to look into. But QuickTime should be free for simple stuff like this. And if you're on Windows, I'm sure there's other, I'm sure QuickTime or other apps are available. So that's the first step is just figuring out how to screenshot or screen record your pages. And so hopefully I think you can figure out a way to do that. Now for me, since I'm using an iPhone, I can just airdrop that screen recording onto my computer. But if you're using some other method, you're gonna have to find a way to get it to your computer as well. But once you have all of your materials ready, then you can put them in your editing software. And I'm gonna show you a few tricks on how to place and track them for nice touches. So in this case, I'm using After Effects. And one, the first thing I can do is just scale the video down to the size that I need. I'm holding shift just to constrain proportions, but just using the move tool, I can put it wherever I like. And you'll notice a lot of times in the show, this is basically enough. They just have the video statically on the screen or the picture, and there's no motion to it. A few touches they do sometimes add are under the transformation. You could perhaps lower the opacity a little bit to make it see through. You could even change the blending mode maybe to screen or something like that to again, blend it with the background a little bit, make it transparent. And also one thing they do to soften up the edges is just some little bit of feathering, something like a crop edges, which is a preset in After Effects or just a crop tool in general where you can crank up the feathering will allow you to kind of like feather the edges to be softer. Another thing to note is like the thumb scrolling. This is something you can't really perfect. I suppose if you're actually recording your screen at the same time as you're recording your actor or your hands, then the thumb scrolling would match up perfectly. So we can just pretend like the scrolls match or try to time it together nicely. And up until this point, you could do this simple type of effect method in any editing software. So Premiere, Final Cut, whatever. However, one thing that I'm in After Effects for is if we wanted to add a little bit more of an advanced touch to this. You'll notice sometimes in the show, it's not just a static overlay like this. It's more like it's following the computer or the phone or the character's walking and the screen is bouncing up and down a little bit. So to add that subtle motion information, what I'm gonna do is create a new layer and it's just gonna be a new null object. Now on the right hand side, I wanna open up my tracker panel. If you don't see this, you can always go to window tracker and for the motion source, I'm gonna choose my video clip of the phone in the hands. So what I'm gonna click is track motion because I wanna track the motion of this phone kind of bobbing up and down. And really for this case, we only need to track the position that it's slightly moving. So you notice this track point gets added onto the screen. And what you want to do is put this point on an object that you think After Effects would be able to keep track of and follow. Something with nice contrast that can be distinguished by the program. So in this case, you see this little corner of the phone. I think After Effects should have no problem keeping track with the contrast in that little corner and sticking this tracking point on it. So you kind of have two hit boxes. One is like the outer bounds and one is the inner bounds. If your object is moving like really volatile and violently, it might be harder. But for this case, it's really gentle movement. So something tight and narrow should still be no problem. Now, what we want to do is analyze the clip completely. So I'm going to analyze backwards because we happen to be in the middle. And then I'm going to analyze forward once it reaches frame zero. So I'm going to analyze forward as well. But you see it's creating a bunch of little keyframes and it's matching the slight movement that this phone is doing. 
So once it's done, we have all those little track points. You see the motion target is null too. If it's not, make sure you edit the target to be that layer and press apply, making sure you have position checked. So I'll press apply and it'll apply the X and Y dimensions that we just got. And you'll see all these keyframes pop up on the clip, but you should also see them all pop up on the null object. Now, in order to get the information from the keyframes we just created on this null object to apply to the phone clip or the screen clip, all we're gonna do is drop down the transform menu and on the position, we're going to use the pick whip tool and move it to the position in the null keyframe section. So now you should see it's following exactly that key point. Now it put the center on the center. So one thing we will wanna do is maybe just move the anchor point a little bit so we can put it where we want again. But you'll see that it has linked the position to the null object. And so all of these keyframes are acting on it. So we get a slightly more advanced look where the screen is attached to all the little slight hand movements that are going on, which can add some nice realism to it. And that's more like what you see in that example clip with the laptop where it's shrinking and changing in position. So those are two methods to create this pop-up screen effect. A simple one, you can do, probably do in any video editor where it's static, or a little bit of an advanced touch in After Effects where you're tracking the motion as well. I suppose you could try to manually keyframe some wiggle and motion too, if you're in Premiere or something like that. But hopefully this gave you some good ideas on how to do this super easy effect, but as you see, it's nicely used in popular shows such as you on Netflix. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, definitely subscribe to my channel here on YouTube to stay tuned for all my new videos. And you can follow me on Instagram and social media at Justin Odisho if you want to keep in touch with me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.